New research has uncovered evidence linking the Epstein-Barr virus to several illnesses. And as a woman, you are more susceptible to many of these. Immune controlling genes are mainly located on the X chromosome. With two X chromosomes, women have very active immune systems. And there's more to female immunity. We're learning how hormones like estrogen heighten women's immune responses. And it so happens, Epstein-Barr viruses attack the immune system. Let's delve into the top five signs and symptoms of an Epstein-Barr attack. Because when you know you have one, you are better equipped to fight it. Why not subscribe to our channel for more in-depth information about female health? Women's Wellness Channel is here for you. Give us a like and tell us your own experiences in the comments section after the video. We and other health conscious women would love to learn more. And finally, stay watching for a special free gift. Let's get back to Epstein-Barr. You may have heard it be called EBV or even herpes. EBV is number four of eight herpes virus types that affect humans. That's why it's also referred to as human herpes virus four. When we catch EBV, those viruses head straight for B cells. B lymphocytes are immune cells that produce antibodies. Antibodies recognize unwanted cells, particles, or viruses. They attach to these unwanted materials and wave flags to attract other immune cells that can destroy intruders. During a first attack, Epstein-Barr viruses multiply inside our B cells. Too many viruses or low immunity mean we get sick. Here's something shocking. 95% of us already have the virus. Most of us come into contact with Epstein-Barr at a very young age. Children don't experience many symptoms. As we grow older, symptoms get worse. Men and women are equally likely to suffer from more severe signs. These are the symptoms of infectious mononucleosis. They show our immune systems are fighting Epstein-Barr. Sign number five is very characteristic of a first EBV infection. Sign five, sore throat. Nearly all adolescents and adults infected with Epstein-Barr complain of a sore throat. Mono, kissing disease, or glandular fever, they all mean the same thing, is passed from person to person via saliva. So the immune system commonly detects and responds to the EBV in the mouth and throat. Epstein-Barr viruses must enter B lymphocytes to multiply, and we have lots of B cells in the mucous membranes of the throat. Once inside a B cell, the virus replicates. When there are enough, the B cell bursts open. Replicated viruses escape to infect more B cells. We call this process shedding. Shedding causes a huge inflammatory response. The throat becomes damaged and sore. The inflammatory response also affects local glands. So let's look at sign number four. Sign four, swollen glands. The older we are, the more we suffer from swollen glands during an initial EBV infection. As the virus travels via saliva, it's no surprise it gathers in salivary glands, as well as local lymph nodes close to the neck. Lymph nodes are reservoirs of immune system lymphocytes. Lymphocytes include B cells. These reservoirs fill with viruses and immune cells to become large, painful lumps. We keep mentioning first or initial attacks. This is important. During a first attack, the body learns to recognize the virus. The next step is for B cells to make antibodies against it. Within a few days or weeks, healthy antibodies fight. This fight leads to sore throats and swollen glands. But our immune cells never get rid of the virus completely. Instead, Epstein-Barr viruses hide inside infected B cells. They remain there for the rest of our lives. Scientists call this quiet period a latent state. Immunosuppressed or sick individuals might experience a second or third bout of mononucleosis. But a latent virus is just as dangerous. It turns out the virus isn't hiding, it's working. And in a latent state, Epstein-Barr can change our DNA. Viral changes to genes are known to cause long-term chronic illnesses. And women are more likely to develop many of these. Before we look at gender-specific Epstein-Barr signs, make a note and sign up for your free gift. We'd like to give you a very special ebook, 25 Energy Boosting Superfoods for Women. You'll discover a long list of foods proven to optimize female health. All you have to do is open the description below and click on the link. 
Now, back to female signs of Epstein-Barr. Sign 3. Ulcus vulvae acutum. Deep sores on the vulva are a rare female sign of EBV infection. Like the symptoms of mononucleosis, these sores occur during a first infection. Although this doesn't happen very often, EBV can be sexually transmitted, especially through open wounds. What is interesting is that the virus itself is not found in damaged vulva cells. Its DNA is. Scientists suspect this unusual sign is simply a very strong immune reaction. Like sign number two. Sign two. Periorbital edema. A recent Chinese study looked at gender differences in EBV symptoms. It found that male victims suffer more from headaches and have higher counts of white blood cells called leukocytes. Only one acute symptom was more common in women, up to six times more common in fact, periorbital edema. Periorbital edema is swelling around the eyes. It's also called the Hoagland sign. Luckily, the swelling dies as the initial infection ends. We don't know why some people develop the Hoagland sign and some don't but most theories revolve around the female immune system. The worst EBV complication is directly involved with our immune responses. Sign one, new autoimmune disorders. Research tells us female hormones aren't only part of the reproductive system. Estrogen plays important roles in lots of different body tissues and systems. Brain, cardiovascular system, skin and hair, mucous membranes and immune system. When we reach menopause, female risk of heart disease and Alzheimer's grows because as women age, they produce less protective estrogen. And with two X chromosomes, we also have stronger immune reactions than men. But there's a problem. Our immune systems can react too strongly. And as a result, women suffer from more autoimmune disorders where immune cells attack healthy cells. Shockingly, women are up to 16 times more susceptible to autoimmune diseases than men. Studies show the Epstein-Barr virus triggers several autoimmune disorders. Disorders like multiple sclerosis, lupus and Graves' disease. How can a virus do that? We're not quite sure yet. One of the theories is estrogen. Women are more likely to develop multiple sclerosis and estrogen can switch on specific autoimmune genes. The body starts to think a protective protein on the surface of nerve cells is harmful. B cells produce antibodies to attack that protein and this damages essential nerves. And EBV? All this research is very new, but scientists think the virus also makes certain genes switch on and off. And EBV also seems to affect more of our genes with estrogen in the vicinity. This effect can continue long after we have recovered from acute symptoms. It takes up to 10 years to develop MS symptoms after an Epstein-Barr infection. Early protection can, perhaps, control this terrible disease. Epstein-Barr vaccines are already in development. They should stop future generations from that first infection. That would mean they will also prevent long-term, latent virus complications, like EBV-associated autoimmune disorders. In the meantime, keep a sharp eye on your health. Give your body the energy, rest, and nutrients it needs to fight any infection. We hope you found our video interesting. If you did, let us know in the comment section. Do you appreciate how we bring our information across? Then give us a like. Have a happy, healthful day.